The subject of today's video is a syndrome that can rob a person of their autonomy. It can feel like your limbs have a mind of their own, counteracting what you do, or even going as far as to cause you harm. In today's video, we will look at alien hand syndrome and the disturbing facts behind this misunderstood condition. It's perhaps helpful to start with an explanation as to what alien hand syndrome is, or AHS. It will typically cause a person's hand, though sometimes it can be a person's leg, to move independently. To the patient, it can feel as though the hand belongs to someone else, almost like it has a mind of its own. This can include performing complex, purposeful actions without the person's conscious control. This can be actions that contradict what the person is purposely doing, such as closing a cupboard door with the alien hand that had been intentionally opened by the other. It tends to be the non-dominant hand that becomes the alien hand, interfering with the actions of the dominant. The movements caused by alien hand syndrome are not random spasms or tremors. Instead, the rogue hand acts deliberately. The hand might reach out and grab objects, even if the person doesn't want it to, or in extreme cases, the alien hand has hit, scratched, or even tried to choke its owner. This often leads people to describing their alien hand as feeling completely separate from themselves. Some sufferers have even named their hand, speaking about it as if it were another person. This psychological disconnection makes the condition deeply disturbing and adds to the mental harm the syndrome can inflict. Depression and anxiety are often seen with sufferers of AHS, as the risk of losing control or stopping normal function in public can be devastating to one's mental well-being. As for the causes of alien hand syndrome, it occurs when specific areas of the brain, those regions involved in voluntary movement and coordination, are in some way damaged. It would be an understatement to say that the brain is a complex organ, but it's important to note how different lobes and hemispheres work together and rely on information processing from different parts to fully interpret the world around us. Damage to one part of the brain might affect function of another part of the brain. The most common causes of damage that can lead to alien hand syndrome include strokes or brain injury, or neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. These conditions can damage three key areas in the brain that can lead to alien hand syndrome, and depending on which part of the brain is damaged will determine the type of AHS for that person. No two cases of this syndrome will be the exact same. Damage to the brain is rarely uniform, and so the consequences of the damage will be different every time. If the frontal lobe is damaged, the alien hand will perform grasping and groping behaviours, interfering with the person's intentional actions. If the corpus callosum, the thick bundle of nerves that connects the two hemispheres of the brain is damaged, a different set of symptoms will present. Normally, it allows for both sides of the brain to communicate and coordinate movement, whilst regulating involuntary movement. But if damaged, each hand will act independently, sometimes even working against one another such as buttoning and unbuttoning a shirt at the same time. If the posterior lobe is damaged, the alien hand will often perform more complex, goal-directed movements, such as manipulating objects skillfully. However, there can be an overlap in symptoms if more than one part of these areas of the brain are damaged. As for the history of alien hand syndrome, it's difficult to know for sure if there are any historical examples. It can be difficult looking in retrospect for psychological conditions when understanding about the brain would come centuries later. It can be especially hard to diagnose any conditions hundreds of years later. In medieval Europe, similar unexplained medical conditions were almost always seen through the lens of religion and superstition. People with what we now call alien hand syndrome could have been seen as possessed by demons or even cursed by witches. This can only be speculative, as there is little to no evidence of what could be seen as AHS. What's more, instances of this syndrome are incredibly rare, with only a handful of clinically recorded cases. In the last 20 years or so, there have been less than 200 confirmed cases. It's also only a relatively recent discovery. Our understanding of AHS began in the early years of the 20th century. In 1900, Dr. Hugo Liebmann, a German urologist, wrote extensively about apraxia. This is a disorder where someone struggles to engage in voluntary actions, typically after a stroke. This could include being asked to comb one's hair, but be unable to handle the comb correctly. 
While his focus was not specifically on AHS, his observations of patients who struggled to control their movements and the link between damage to the brain would lay the groundwork for future discoveries. In 1908, Dr. Kurt Goldstein, another German neurologist, made observations about people with brain injuries. He noted how certain people had difficulty with their coordination or voluntary movement. Goldstein published accounts of patients who exhibited automatic or uncontrolled movements of their limbs. He described cases in which a patient's hand would perform complex actions without their intention. Unlike spasms, these actions appeared purposeful, sometimes disruptive, but entirely disconnected from the patient's conscious planning. Goldstein interpreted these involuntary movements as a consequence of the brain being an integrated organism. He believed that damage to one area of the brain could lead to unexpected disruptions in motor control, perception and intentionality. In Goldstein's interpretation, these involuntary movements were not random, but a sign there was a breakdown in the brain's normal coordination and intention. He saw the limb as temporarily autonomous, acting without integration into the person's unified sense of self. His description is uncanny in how close it would be to our current understanding of alien hand syndrome. The syndrome came into clear focus in 1972, when Dr. S. Byron and Dr. J. Jedniak reported a case in a scientific journal. They described a patient who, after suffering with a tumour, experienced involuntary movements of their left hand. The patient reported that her left hand seemed to have a mind of its own, occasionally performing actions that contradicted her intentions. For instance, while attempting to button her shirt with her right hand, her left hand would actively unbutton it. The case study was pivotal because it highlighted two critical features of the syndrome, a lack of conscious control over the affected limb and a sense of foreignness, as though the limb did not belong to the patient. Throughout the 80s and 90s, more cases of alien hand syndrome were documented. Researchers began to classify the syndrome into three variants depending on where the brain was damaged. One notable example is that of Karen Brine of New Jersey. Karen had epilepsy and one extreme treatment for this was a corpus colostomy, where the nerves of the corpus colostomy are severed to prevent epileptic fits. This procedure essentially splits the brain into two, severing the connection between the two hemispheres of the brain. Karen's surgery stopped her seizures, but she was left with alien hand syndrome. She went to the doctor to explain her symptoms, but her doctor had to ask her to stop unbuttoning her clothing. Karen had no idea that her left hand was undressing her. She described how the hand was out of control, hiding things without her knowledge, or stubbing out cigarettes when she wasn't looking. Even worse, her left hand would do her harm. It would slap her in the face, and there are even accounts of people being choked by their alien hand. Thankfully, there are a number of treatments for alien hand syndrome. In some cases, the trauma or damage to the brain will eventually begin to repair itself. Once the damage to the brain is no longer present, the AHS will cease to be a problem. But where there is lasting damage or degenerative conditions, intervention is needed. For Karen, medication was the answer. Anti-seizure medication or neuromuscular blocking agents can be used to limit the unwanted moves. For some, giving the alien hand something to do, like a fidget toy, can reduce the unwanted movements. For others, cognitive or physical therapy can allow a person to regain control of their limbs, and some even use repeated botulinum toxin injections to restrict movements. The discovery of alien hand syndrome did more than just expand neurology's catalogue of disorders. It provided a profound window into the relationship between consciousness, intention, and voluntary movement. The fact that a person could lose control over a limb, yet remain fully aware of it, challenged prevailing notions of free will and the unity of self. It sparked interest not only among neurologists, but also philosophers and cognitive scientists, who sought to understand the neurological basis of agency and self-perception. The condition has even melded with popular culture. The film Dr. Strangelove, a former Nazi and nuclear scientist working with the Americans, in the film, his gloved right hand appears to have a will of its own, going to choke the doctor and attempting to perform the Nazi salute. The film came out years before the discovery of the syndrome, but the condition is sometimes referred to as Dr. Strangelove syndrome in reference to the film. Alien hand syndrome is a truly disturbing condition. The idea that your own limbs can betray you is something hard to accept, akin to demonic possession, capable of causing you harm or mental distress, it is truly 
a disturbing condition.